Okay, five seconds to go. And away, and it's a clean start. And a good start for Ongara. Kanas in second, Ronald Falk third. Still uh, going up for grid order with uh, the Australian McBride in fourth. And it's already a little bit of a gap there for Ongara as he gets away in lap one. He's pulled a gap and the battle is second and third. So let's get this. Oh, wow, well, look at that. A good jump and suddenly Ronald Falk is in second. So Ronald Falk takes second and let's uh, stick with the second, third and fourth. You can just see uh, a little flash of Ongara as he goes through. But Ronald Falk now, oh, he got a bad landing. He's dropped down to third again. So. The net effect of that is a good start for Ongaro. Kanas second, Ongaro third, McBride four, battle five. Ongaro didn't land, but he opened and it's uh, Ogden six. So, out in front, David Ongaro. Second is Kanas. Third is Ronafalk. Fourth, McBride. As they settle down, Ronafalk got a break and then kind of lost it again because he mislanded at that corner there. But they come down, and now he has to set about getting past Kanath before Ongara gets too much of a lead. Now, these three have been the class today. Kanath has a massive comeback from the previous event yesterday, the whole yesterday, where he just couldn't get the car handling, had no luck at all. But now he's won two of the qualifying rounds, and he's holding back Ronafalk. Getting into a battle we saw a lot in one of the qualifiers between Robert Battle and uh, Cole Ogden for fourth and fifth. And then it's McBride six, Stringer seven, Vidmeyer eight. So, whilst going well, Ongaro's not breaking away. He's got a lead of 1.7 seconds. Ronafelt desperately chasing after Kanas. And that will go by, and the lead now is 1.6. So in fact, the Kanas. Ronafalk train on your picture here, gained a tenth of a second on Gara. Now, Gara probably has to decide whether to push and risk a mistake or just ease it back and hope for the best. And oh, not a very good line there, and that's cost them both time. Kanas got it wrong, Ronafalk couldn't get past him, and they both lose time, and that's the good news. This is the where Ongaro is going to gain this early part, because whilst they're not hitting each other, these two are as fast as Ongaro. When they louse each other up, that's when Ongaro gains, and the gain he made there was six tenths of a second. Now, this is a very key part of what we've seen on this track here at Circular Verde the past three days, is it is very, very difficult to pass. If there's a driver ahead of you who wants to keep his line, getting past him is going to be very difficult. And this is what Ronald Falk's suffering at the moment. He's in second and third. He's in second. Kanas driving a great line in third. Robert Battle beginning to split away from Ogden in fourth. And up the inside. Oh, that's a great overtake. Fantastic stuff. So, got him on the landing there. And let's see that one again. If we can, in a minute. We'll go, it's still going around. And there we go. So, he just lands it, turns, and it gets a better. And it gets, also, there's a sort of check block pass on the whole thing as it went on. So, they come around. There's a nice two corner pass there. But, and you come back almost a lap later. The net effect, though, of that passing is that Ronafalk has still lost some time in that last lap. We saw the fastest lap of the race from Ongaro, 29.1. And Kanas now not, lead, not being gapped by Ronafalk in his second and third battle. Ogden and Battler are falling away, but not from each other, just from this, these two. The lead for Ongaro remains three seconds. And now it's kind of get your head down, do what you can do for Ronafalk because he's now managing a little bit of space behind him. The, lap, the gap came down by two tenths of a second there to the leader. Oh, and the massive tank stuff of the Canas has lost him. So now the pressure's off temporarily. It's now down for Ronnefeld to start turning some laps to catch up on Garo. Battle now in fourth. Ogden fifth. Misha Wittmeyer, great run for him to sixth. But Bryce on 41 is dropping down. He's in eighth. And you've got the back of the field is uh, Martin, Hara, Mork, Green and Stringer. And that time round, there was a gain of uh, a loss. Ronafout lost a tenth of a second despite setting his fastest lap because Ongara set his fastest lap, which is the fastest lap of the race so far, a 29.062. So Ongaro looking pretty good for his lead at the moment. Cars are now in a sixth present, but uh, again, a little bit of a, a loss of time, I think, by Ronafout there. So Ronafout is slowly losing a little bit of time each lap. This time he lost uh, half a second. And it's all those micro mistakes that are going to cost him. 
Canas also is dropping off, so at the moment it's all going really to plan for Davide Angara and the Scuderia Scampi Ross. Remember, he ran, went one round one yesterday, which is two 30 lap finals, and now he has to try and do the same thing with 120 laps. But don't forget, just two weeks ago at the DXR final, we saw him do this at the start of the race against Ryan Lutz, and then Lutz hunted him down as conditions got more difficult and the tyres wore out. Well, I'm pretty sure he won't make a mistake again. I'm sure he'll have a, a durable tyre for the whole race with Ongaro. Let's see if we can pick up the leader now. He's at the top of the track, about to go over the infinity jump, and comes now into the off-camera corner. This is Ongaro. Pulled out a 4.2 second. Lead. Another fastest lap of all, uh, 28.8 in the last lap. And we are about five and a half minutes in. Still too early to think about the first pit stop. And that time round, he gained another 0.4 of a second. So he's got himself into a nice little rhythm now on Garo. And the rhythm is uh, kind of cracking the, uh, the pace of Ron Falk, who's dropping back a small amount each time. And he's dropped back another small amount. And equidistantly dropping, it has to be said, is Kanas. And then there's a kind of a train of cars. And the person who's going particularly well at the moment is Misha Vidmeyer. Vidmeyer is pulling through the field at the moment. He's now up to fifth. So that S the S-Works obviously have got their cars worked out. And Ronafalk's got a problem with the tyre. Okay, we need Ronafalk. He's going to go the infinity jump. Ronafalk over the infinity jump now. Ronafalk coming over the low camber. Ronafalk now onto the double, the Coca-Cola double. He's got a problem with his front left. So this is a disaster for David Ronafalk. The tyre's coming off the rim. What's he going to do? Well, he's going to come into the pits. He's dropped down to third. He's going to have to get a tyre change and ensure that the pits are ready for him. We are just six minutes in, and it looks like it could be... There he goes. Let's see what the pit stop does. They are fueling him at the same time. They had another one on there. And out he goes, and that is going to cost him probably a lap, I would think. Somebody else put the stop, but that's put him back nowhere. And now it's, uh, this is damage limitation for Ronafout now. He's lost the uh, best part of a lap. Let's see what this lap time was. His last one wasn't brilliant. Uh, he's down a lap. And this whole situation, as he comes over, he flies over, and Ronafout flies over that, and his time is a 53. So. And all kind of, it, right, the only good thing about that was it happened in time to have a fuel stop. It wasn't a total loss. So Ongaro leads seven seconds from Juan Carlos Canas, 17 seconds from battle. And it's Misha Vidmeyer now who's... Uh, Patrick Hoffer now has picked up fourth place. So the race is looking a bit different than it was. Let's see if we can find uh, our leader, Ongaro, just to finish the lap. And he's now coming down the main straight. Yep. No. Where is he? Where's the cheeky monkey? There he is. Okay. So there's Ongaro. Back in the lead and already lapping traffic. A long way ahead of Canas. So Ongaro. Looking good. So he's now turning. Last lap to 35 with its fuel on it. 29.2. Canas even lost a bit of time in the uh, pit stop. So that first bit of action. Interesting, even despite losing the tyre, Ronafak only dropped to seventh. <laughs> so he has a chance to try and really get himself back. He's a long, long way behind. He's a lap behind, basically. Um, I'm surprised he's not further behind, actually, but as they come on. So we're now with Ogden, who's just behind uh, Oh, So Ongaro, he's a lap ahead now of Ogden and Ronafalk. Ogden and Ronafalk are behind him. There's a lap down. So you look at that train. In the middle car there is Ogden, who's a lap down in sixth. And then a lap down in seventh is Ronafalk. So the leader, and then Ronafout now is running 
with Ongaro, but the problem is he's a lap down after losing that front left tyre. Now, I know what he's going to do. Is he just going to try and unlap himself? He is, and he's let him unlap himself. Okay. Ah, that's why. That's a 33. It's not a 94. That's interesting. Okay, there's a bit of a... Hoffa's car and Ongaro's car are a bit too similar in colour, I've decided. And that's the second time I've made a mistake, and I apologise. Um, let's actually pick up Ongaro's. That would be a, a, mar a far more useful thing to do. So drop two spaces, and that is Ongaro. So it was actually... It was And there we are, so Ogden let Ongaro go through then, that's right, with the orangey wing. So they are playing fair. It was Hoffa all along. I was, Hoffa's got a body shell at certain angles, looks very similar to Ongaro's. The reason is they have single colours, make it much easier. One's white, one's red, one's blue. So not a lap down, uh, a bit less than a lap down, as we look at the leader, is Ronnefalk in fifth after that, just in the fastest lap. So he's now racing angry after the racing gods were annoyed with him. So it's on Garo, and behind him is the lapped Cole Ogden. So there's no one really um, at this part. Now, I think there was an interesting Ronnefalk. Can we move forward to Ronnefalk? Because he is um, a little bit further. Where is Ronnefalk? Where's the little green monkey? There he is. He's up at the top of the track now, and uh, coming over the infinity jump, because he's actually storming back through the field. Despite being the best part of a lap behind on Garo, he's now catching up with Robert Battle. So Robert Battle hasn't had a tyre come off. He's only a couple of seconds ahead of him. In fact, you've now got five, four, so you've got three, four, and five. Can you run a foul? Three wheels on my wagon. He's now trying to catch up battle. So there's still a lot, a lot of points to be won for Ronnefalk, and he may end up being the story of this, apart from the fact that it looks like it's, uh, Ongaro has a, a double win, because his lead now is 12 seconds over Canas. But this is now Ronnefalk driving angry, and he has to try, and his next target is my tip for the whole race, because it's an hour long, for a battle, who's about to be subsumed by, um, Hara gets to stop go, by the way. So the battle is now on for third, fourth, and fifth. Currently in fifth is Ronnefalk, which is a remarkable performance to see what happened. Run about now, trying to get back onto the tail of Battle. And Battle, let me tell you, is only about three seconds behind Vidmeyer, who's doing a brilliant job in third. So the gap between Battle and Ronnefelt will come down again. It's come down by two tenths, and it's down to 1.14 seconds. So Robert Bataille, in fourth, has a charging HB performer driver from... Uh, Sweden after him. Now, interestingly, Max Mort was, that, it was in the mix, and now he's out of it. So the three cars you see are third, fourth, and fifth. That's fourth. If you get a bit wider, you'll see third as well, which is the mainly green Misha Vidmeyer, the other S-Works driver, is putting in a great performance. Now, whilst Ronnefalk is gaining on all these drives, he's certainly not gaining on Ongaro. Ongaro is as, uh, three, nine, nine, or 19 twentieths of a lap ahead. But what he can do is he can see points. And this is a championship, and points count. It's not about, oh, I've had a bad day. I don't want to play anymore. This is a championship. He'll be doing the whole season. It's all about points. And getting past Battle and getting past Misha Vidmeyer would stick him in third. And then he may have a chance to set about uh, Kanas. So Kanas is a very, very long way ahead of him. Right, there they go. So at this point, Battle seems to have got to hurry up. Is, uh, though he did lose about a tenth of a second there. He did his fastest lap. The battle is fastest lap of the whole race there. Ronnefalk fuels again. No, Ronnefalk's changing another tyre. So Ronnefalk had another tyre car. There was a, he must have had a glue failure or something. So, so, wow. So Ronnefalk does not have one tyre car. Second, so some, somewhere there's been a gluing issue on the tyres. And he's lost two, both on the outside. His, his two left-hand side tyres are unglued. He now drops down behind Carl McBride in eighth position. Now, it's not often you spend the time with a man who's just had such bad luck, but he's still got a chance to drive through the field again. They're kind of putting this, they're kind of phasing these in with where they want to do a fuel stop. So at seven minutes, they, did the, they would do a fuel stop. He doesn't, lose, he doesn't double lose out of it. He only single loses out of it. Ongaro has a 17 second lead over Canas now. Widmar is in third, Battle's in fourth. So 
So let's let's leave uh, Ronald Fount for his back. Let's get to the, let's get to the, the let's pick up uh, Misha Vidmeyer, who's just about to go round the uh, off camber corner. This is the battle for third place. Vidmeyer and Battle are battling for third place. And Misha Vidmeyer, who must who, who's probably got nose bleeding so far at the field, has shown nothing in, in deference to him, I'm afraid, in the. Uh, in the eight qualifiers I had today, but suddenly the long final and Battle makes a huge mistake. And Vidmeyer, who was under pressure for third, is now comfortably in third. He is something, he's only seven seconds behind Kanas. And we may well get him coming into fuel here. So Vidmeyer, yes, works driver from Germany. Just going to show, some of these people who were previously quite unfancied by the uh, people who thought they were in the know in the RC world have, have, have proven themselves in this atmosphere to be able to perform. Oh, that was a lot. That was a late decision, wasn't it? That was a last minute. I think, oh, yeah, I'll go for it after all. Bang, and out they go. Fueled and away. With my, well, probably, I didn't see where the battle came in there. There's a kind of a selection of unwell cars there. Ah, oh, that was, I think that was battle again in his tail. So what's happened is battle. No, that's a 60. That is battle. It's a battle there. Was on his back. Now they are now third and fourth again, but I think the battle is a pit stop behind. So as they go now, we're a quarter of the way through the race. Paddle and Vidmeyer are still. Oh, no, it wasn't a Vidmeyer. Just a bit of a fumble. So Vidmeyer fumbles. Ronald Falk's back to fifth again, which is just getting ridiculous now. <laughs> so Ronald Falk is back to fifth. His next victim will be <coughs> Misha Widmeyer. So Ronald Falk is still getting value for money for his track time here. As we look at Widmeyer, just so you know, Ronald Falk is about four corners back, and he's the next person there. Now, Badio has managed to get to third. Now, the interesting thing about Badio being in third is I think he's on a different fuel strategy from Misha Widmeyer, because he should have stopped earlier. So where is Robert? Robert is exiting the corner as he enters the corner. Let's see if we can pick up one Carlos Canas. Coming down the main straight right now, blue and white. Let's see if we can see much of our second place man so far. This is Canas. He's gone out. He started in the... Well, he ended up... He was, he was second for a few laps, overtaken by uh, Ronafak, but then Ronafak has a problem. And Canas slowly falling off the lead that is being set by... On Gara, but now interesting, just in the corner of my eye, Battle has indeed pitted, so Battle is on a different strategy. So Battle running longer than Vidmar, so Vidmar may well at the end of this race have reclaimed third place. He has indeed, so Vidmar is third, he's the car behind this car here, Kanas is a 10 second gap. So Kanas is about uh, ooh, 17 seconds behind On Garo. And 10 seconds ahead of getting a bit more than 10 seconds ahead of Vidmeyer. Vidmeyer now, I think, has been lapped. I think, I think Garo has lapped everyone up to second. Kanas down the steps is 21 seconds behind, yeah. So every lap he's losing a few tenths. But because of the way his day's been going, which is in his favour, he has very little challenge. And the only the person behind him is his S Works teammate, Misha Vidmeyer. So the Spaniard. Carries on going. Now, moving back to the front again. We need to get Ronafalk and Battle. Ronafalk and Battle come over the infinity jump now, and they're about to go into the off-camber hairpin because they're back together again. This is a battle for fourth and fifth in this amazing comeback. I don't know whether, because this team, it, 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 they've heard it's a team sport, they decide they're going to do as many pit stops as possible in under five seconds, and Ronafalk's taken the whole tyre changing to heart, thinking it's an advantage. But there we go, Battle and Ronafalk. Oh, and Battle then man, Ronald has got him. So Ronald is back up to fourth place. Battle had a bad land there. I think Battle thought the, I think Battle probably will find it's not the setup he wanted, or perhaps we well, obviously not even anywhere near halfway yet. Perhaps this wasn't the setup that is working at the moment. So Ronald moves forward. His next victim will once again be Misha Vidmeyer for third place. And hopefully in between then and now a tire doesn't fall off. So Ronald climbing the hill, the hot race, over the steps now. That was a dangerous double, so cool they tried to pitch off the track the whole time. Down the main straight, past the past us, past the rostrum, past the drivers, and up over the master's jump through the infinity leap. He's gonna turn sharp left before he comes down the very tricky off-camera hairpin, down to virtually zero miles an hour, and piles over the double double. The Coca-Cola and the Motor World double before the huge triple leap into destiny lands it nicely. 
And that's a lap with Ronna Falk. And Ronna Falk lapping at something like 29.1. So there's Ronna Falk. As he races around. Montaro leading by about a lap. Ronafout trying to push his way forward. Last time round, he was slower off that accident than uh, Vidmeyer. So that gap has put him behind battle as well. So I was looking away and missed him going behind battle. Well, for me, as soon as you try and study something else on the, uh, on the computer, they always do something, which means you end up missing something happening. And people will shout, oh, Nick, you've missed it. So I'll pick it up. So the battle of fourth and fifth is back on again with Robert Battle flying over the start finish. And he is currently in fourth, Ronafalt in fifth. Ronafalt is hunting him down again. The basic speed of Ronafalt has got is not that far off uh, the Ongaro speed. But, um, oh, and a bit of a mistake by Battle, who's kind of just using his basic experience to stay in place at the moment. Tara has another accent off camera. And Garo kind of took, took Martin off. No, it's Hopper actually. And Hopper took Martin off and there's a howl of uh, disapproval. So, ba Battle rejoined. These two have been at it for uh, rather a long time with uh, Battle and... Uh, oh, just nudged him out of the way. Well, that was a pretty much easy pass, wasn't it? Through goes Ronafalk back into fourth again. Now, Vidmeyer is not a long way up the road. Vidmeyer is two cars, so you've got to get past JQ first. And there's JQ. So can Ronafalk... Oh, no, Ronafalk comes in more fuel. Is he keeping all the tyres this time? Yes, all tyres stay on. Back out he is, and this time we'll drop behind Carl McBride. So Ronafalk stops, drops behind Carl McBride. RCGP round one. Currently leading is the sorry, RCGP round two. The first of the 120 lap mains, the hour long mains, led by David Longaro from the bell. One car's Canassi's second, Mishu Myers third, Rob Battle's fourth, Carl Rose fifth, and Ron Lafayette, which now is sixth. It has overtaken more cars than anyone else in this uh, first 42, 45 laps and 22 minutes. I'm interested to see how far he can finish. Though it does seem very much on Garo, barring a mechanical now, is going to be the winner. But I've said it before when things go wrong. Canas looking like pretty good for a second. Don't forget, the reason that Ron Falk is down here, he's just joining us, is he has twice had to replace, had to replace the tyre. Once it was right off the rim, which is the front right, and then the rear right, uh, for the front left, and then the rear left, uh, because they obviously realise there's a fault happening with it. So Ronafalk, oh, Ronafalk has been trying to, and Ronafalk gets McBride, because McBride was facing the wrong way. So, McBride dropped home Ronafalk. And so Lee Martin's flamed out. JQ comes in the pits, eliminating himself from the uh, list of drivers in the ring. Cole Ogden, um, I haven't mentioned him very much. He's in eighth. He's obviously lost a lap early on, or lost, lost some time early on, so he's not really showing the pace he's showing the rest of the time, but Ogden. Still the man moving forward. Vidmar and, and Battle are two and a half seconds apart. Vidmar is seven seconds behind Canas, who's not looking uh, that much like he's got too much power. I think maybe because we're, we're on a different strategy. As in comes McBride beneath his fuel. Certainly, Ronafalk, I think, may end up stopping once more than everyone else. And now I've got Vidmar and Ronafalk. So this is a battle now. So what, during the fuel of an accident, maybe where Battle's gone, so... Ronafalk now right behind Misha Vidmeyer. This is the battle for fourth. Can Ronafalk get fourth place from Vidmeyer? Vidmeyer obviously had an accident off corner, which took him out of, con to out of contention. Also with um, oof, just over, just slightly over the top of there of, uh, I think it's probably Hoffer. Yeah, he was over Hoffer. So Ronafalk now battling for fourth place. He's had a selection of comeback drives he's had today so far. 
Certainly earning his call, that's for sure. So Vidmeyer, again, showing this great form the S-Works driver has picked up in this race. Misha, unfancy before he got here, but certainly showing why he is here. Running fourth, running laps, they're keeping Ronaf out behind him. And Ronaf out will be looking very hard to try and get up to the front. So it's a battle here between Vi Ronaf out and Vidmeyer. Vidmeyer knowing that if he runs the line, he can carry on blocking. That's the 14 car against the seven car. It's the S-Works against the HB. It's a sweet, oh, it's got him. No, yes, yes, they're both in the air. They both crash, obviously, but both get going most of the right way. And he hits him, and that's just losing time for both of them. And, and I think we'll have... Warnings, those are warnings. Yes, yeah, see that one again, because they've both been given a warning. So into fourth place, but losing time goes... So they land it, and they, that was kind of fair enough. And I'm not quite sure. Then they kind of waited, clipped, waited, went round. And that's, yeah, that's no foul. That's just, that's just confusion by those two drivers who've got kind of the air. So Ronafout gets through on that one. He's in fourth now. But third will be a lot further away because of that kerfuffle. And they've lost time. And indeed, battle now is about five seconds past him. So Vidmeyer. So they've been dropping a nice ill car in the back. And that's Stringer, who, as you can see, was just passed by the man himself, Ronafalk. So, so Ronafalk has gone past Batier. I'm not sure he did that. Where's Batier? He's in the pit. So Ronafalk has gone to third. So Ronafalk has gone to third. Because Batier made a mistake. So Ronafalk now is in third. Batier is pressing him down. So, uh, it's not quite there because there's a different fuel strategy going on. I think Batty might actually still be in that third. So, Runoff out now. Driving on. Dropping down. Down the main straight. Right, Runoff out now in third. He's a lap and 19, well, 19 seconds and a lap and a half back. It's 19 seconds he's got to try and make on one car's canal. I think it's a bit hard to do. There he is. He was a 2.6 faster last time. As he comes back towards us, flies it. Let's see what happens this time round. 30.7 for Canas that time. And they... Between, well, he's gaining at 1.7 seconds a lap. So Ronnefeld, despite everything, and I've got the feeling that he is going to have to take fuel before both Battle and Misha Vidmar. I've got back behind them again. Just to remind you that Ongaro is winning this quite easily by three quarters to, to four eighths of a lap and we are now at 55 laps after 27 minutes so they're going to get quite close to being half an hour for no, 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 one of has a fast lap of 28.6 one car's Kanas has lost all his pace so Kanas has lost all his pace and he's losing something like two seconds a lap to run about now I'm not quite sure why that is is Knaz running out of grip? What is it? Let's pick up one car's Knaz underneath us now, the 23 car. He's blue and he's red and he's out at the top of the circuit. Because Knaz may have had several poor laps in a row. That last one was a 29-1. But he's not been the 28s for a while. He's about and he's about to get lapped as well. So Ronafalk, so Ongaro is about to lap Knaz. As you see Knaz go away, he comes around and completes another lap. You'll see in the background, that is your leader about to put a lap. And then that one was a 29-3. Again, there's not... There's not much pace. Runnefalk's dropped down below. I think he must have taken... Oh, Runnefalk's changing another tyre. Runnefalk's changing another tyre. And he's stalled. And Runnefalk's... This is just a, a, a calitany of errors for Runnefalk. He's now changed three tyres. I don't know what's gone wrong. Well, the glue has fell on all of them. So Runnefalk has another stop. So despite him being laser fast, it doesn't really matter. Because Kanas, if you stop in the pits that many times, you're not going to win a race. So, Kanas carries on going. That time round, again, a 33-3. And Ongaro has lapped him. He's a lap down, but he is second. And the question is whether Robert Batier can uh, hunt down his Spanish teammate for second or third. Ronafout rejoins in sixth again. In what has been a monumentally difficult race. So JCC, one car's Canas. Not quite at halfway mark yet. Go, 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 go. 
on Garo. As we reach halfway, he's lapped the field on Garo. Can ask his second. The story really is the trials and the two stories. On Goro, fabulous. And the trials and tribulations of Dave Ronifak has now made three separate stops for a tyre change. So whoever glued up his tyres uh, obviously used the wrong stuff. Or perhaps they just forgot. Perhaps one of those days when they replaced three, uh, my guess is they're going to have to place the fourth one as well at some point if they're having a problem with three of them. As our leader takes fuel. So the Knas running as he is in second, might just have unlapped himself. No. No, oh, yeah, I think he has. Yeah, just unlapped himself there. So, in the fuel stops, on Goro now is not a lap ahead of the field. It's at halfway light. Don Carlos Canas survived it. 29.7, 29.5 for 29.4. There's Canas now. He will be back being a lap behind again. But it all goes away. And the S-Works fires up. And he drops behind the lapped 33 of Patrick Hoffer. Just at the bottom of the field, it's uh, JQ in eighth, Patrick Hoffer in ninth, Max Moore in tenth, Aaron String in eleventh, Hara in twelfth, and Lee Martin, who hasn't really been able to catch a break at any point this weekend, in thirteenth. Aaron Stringer takes some fuel. And his body painted by his mum, as he found out. So let's see, 62 laps, 31 minutes for Ongaro. We're still with Kanas, and Kanas is quite a long way away. Battle. McBride and uh, Me uh, Widmeyer are not far from them. McBride took themselves to fourth, and Battle is in third, but they're all quite spaced out. Let's see if we can find McBride. Yeah, let's pick up the red and white car about to go up the straight there. That's Carl McBride now in fourth. He's been oscillating around the field, the Australian at the top of the pitch coming down over the infinity leap as the lights make themselves more seen now. You're getting more kind of look of the lights on the track. So, as the wind picks up and the sun goes down, oh, normally the normally wind drops when it gets uh, towards dusk. That might be a British thing, I don't know. So here we go, Carl McBride in fourth place. Oh, well, he was fourth place, now taking fuel. That means you can see when he comes out again, we'll be you can see where he is now. So, hops down now. And through the edges, and then comes back towards our second camera. And when he crosses the line, we'll get a, an idea of where McBride is. And he has dropped. No, he's stayed in fourth. That's surprising. Oh, no, he, no yeah, he's stayed in fourth. Mm. He's got Vidmeyer very close behind him, though. And, you know, he's got Kanas looking to put a lap on him. So Kanas will let through, and then the car behind him now is Vidmeyer. And then behind him, obviously, it's David on, it's um, Ronathalk, who is just racing for his life today. Obviously going to have to stop and change another tyre at some point. And I'm sure this would be just an ordinary final somewhere, either given up and gone, well, there's not much point, really, is there? But this isn't. This is a, a point-scoring championship, so you need to get the points. You need to... Any result, any, any position up is a, is a great result. So, McBride in four, Widmeyer in five, Kanas in between them. And let's drop back to Widmeyer in the green car. That's two back, the all-green car. So that is now, Vibmeyer has now got Runafout back behind him again. Just all you Ongaro fans, he's leading by a lap, and that's another position for, uh, for Runafout. As Vibmeyer makes a mistake, and you can see that the, 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 the light has changed as the dust has come out. We're now looking more at the beauty of the sunset, but the uh, another battle through the field on tyre change three. This is for Runafout. Move forward one car to Runafout, because he's now got to try and move forward as he's doing all he can. His next uh, target, uh, again, will be Carl McBride, but there's a few seconds behind McBride. That last that run that wasn't particularly quick either. Carl Moncars Canas has found some of his pace again. Middling 29s. Ongaro middling 29. I'm sure just doing what he needs to do. And upside down goes runabout. Doesn't help him very much. That means he's now dropped back to fifth again. And got to do it all over again. Valier has stopped for fuel again on 30, 
four minutes. So he may be getting a little bit closer to McBride. He's about to get lapped. And uh, McBride's still a long way away. Canaf's still looking to lap McBride in fourth. Fifmeyer back ahead of Ronnefalk after Ronnefalk's mistake. So, 70 down, 50 to go. We're over halfway in this race, which is looking like a pretty good one for Ongaro. But the real question is, where on earth will Ronnefalk finish and how many tyres will it take him to get there? He's on seven already. He's back on Widmeyer's tail. They're on slightly different strategies. So I think actually Widmeyer is net a bit further ahead than this. So, as you can see, McBride is eight seconds behind. Eight seconds behind Battle. Misha is in again. Oh, wow, didn't change a tyre that time. That's a first. So Ronald Falk actually didn't change a tyre that time. So the fourth tyre probably is the one that's stuck on properly. He's just ahead of JQ at the moment. There's a 16-second gap between Battle and One Cars Canas. There's an eight-second gap between Battle and McBride. There's a five-second gap between Vidmeyer and uh, McBride, and a five-second gap prior to the pit stop for Ronnefeld. And that is a five-second gap. So Ronnefeld now is in fifth, in sixth, sorry, probably comfortably might not have changed any more tyres, and he's got, well, he's got 47 laps to do something about it, which I'm not quite sure what he can do. Canas had another poor lap that time, but he's got a very big cushion of 13 seconds over Battle, who is keeping up our idea he's going to be a, a bit of a fox. So the next person is a long way away. So let's, let's see if we can uh, find the man who's dominating this event. He's down the main straight now with a black wing. Uh, just going up, he's the third of the cars at the top. That is Davide Ongaro. He's got two people in front of him. We're going to get extra laps. It's Lee Martin and his teammate Patrick Hoffer. Martin eases back for him. I'm sure Patrick Hoffer will as well. As Ongaro goes on his merry way. Now. Off camera, Ronald Felch has unlapped himself from Canas. So Canas really isn't going, he's really, I don't know, he's settling for second. He's not going forward, that's for sure. So on Garo, in a lot of traffic, he's got Stringer. Harris letting through, he's got Stringer, Mort letting through, and this is Stringer now ahead of him. So three cars let him through, which you need to do when you're that far ahead. String hasn't quite seen him yet. Gets the blue flags, moves out the way. Ongaro goes on his merry way. Team Scuderia Scampi Rosso. I was saying T. I was oh, oh, Ongaro's upside down. Well, that's the end of the... He'll never win now. Oh, he's will. This gives him more traffic to go past again. So even he's not invincible. I think the only thing that could cost him now is he, if his concentration goes, he makes a mistake that breaks the car. He's established a lead, but that is always a risk. If, you, you know, if anyone who remembers Ayrton Senna at Monaco, I think it was 88, winning by miles, lost concentration, crashed into banner, that was it. Skulked off home, wouldn't talk to anybody for about a week, apparently, he was that upset. But that is it's all about. It's all about concentration level. And in many ways, this is going to be harder for Ongar than if he was chasing someone down, where he could just have the focus of catching the gap or have the focus of, of keeping ahead. He's now comfortably ahead. If he doesn't win, we're all going to go, what happened? And let's see what happens from there. Okay, let's uh, go back to our favourite subject, which is David Ronnefuck. He's just about to go over start finish now. There he is, because he's now catching up again, Misha Vidmeyer, for about the 11th time. On the steps, Ronnefuck, he's got to try and avoid Lee Martin, has a slap jump. And like, oh, Vidmeyer goes to the pit, so he's got a free pass. So uh, Martin, now it's interesting. Ronnefuck's gone past him as he went in the pit, which means effectively he is no longer a pit stop behind him. So that's just a, a genuine gap. And that means that Ronald Fout moves quite nicely up to fifth. So, 
The gap between Ronald Falk and McBride is seven. So you see, like, one car's can ask, and it's five seconds to battle, six seconds to McBride, seven seconds more to Ronald Falk. So they've eased themselves out. There's Misha Vidmar, Cole Alton and Joseph Green, but they're but they, uh, I think uh, Ogden and Cogreen are a lap further back. So we're now coming up to 80 laps, and we are two thirds of the way through. Because obviously the race, not all the cars do 120 laps, just the winner does. And at the end of that lap, the rest of them finish. So, run off out now. The closest, there's no super close battles. But that could all change. So I think there's another set of pit stops to go. And they, they, they need to, kind of wondering what's going to go Fuel-wise. Oh, people getting out of the way, which is quite useful. Now, one car's Canassi has definitely lost time over the past few laps or a battle, but not a massive amount. It's, the lead's gone down from about 17 to 7. That sounds a lot, but I'm sure that Robert's on a different fuel strategy. So who's upside down there? Uh, that's one of our... It's gone upside down, didn't lose a place, but that's, that's bad news for him in his attempt to stay ahead of Vidmar at the pit stop. Uh, let's go and shift over to Robert Bataille. Robert, he's um, just coming over the Infinity Leap now. Orange with yellow wheels. Hara lets him through. And that is Robert Battle. He's uh, drifting around in the middle. So, comes across the line there. A lot, gained four tenths of a second on, on Carlos Canaz, but he's still eight and a bit behind him. So your leader, David Ongaro, he was a lap and a half ahead of one Carlos Canas, who's eight seconds ahead of Robert Battle. Robert Battle is 13 seconds ahead of, of uh, Karl McBride. Karl McBride is three seconds ahead of Ronald Falk, who is two seconds ahead of Vidmeyer. So there they go. Still with Battle. Over the lap again. Yeah, one back, Zach. So it's the orange. So what's changing? Right, let's see if we can find, I'm going to see if I can find Carl McBride in the 10 car, because that is getting more interesting now. Okay, let's go to the red and white car that is about to fly the triple. That's Carl McBride from Australia. Goes round the berm now. And up and over the steps. So Carl McBride. In fourth, but the lead is being eroded by Ronald Falk. He's dropped off battle, but I think that's going to fuel strategy. Someone's thrown himself off the track just in front of him. There's a, uh, a lot of uh, Ogden's had another accident. The Ogden's really not having a good day. Now, usually Misha Vidmeyer has not lost any time to... Ronald Falk since the accident that Ronald Falk had on camera his last is and uh, Bride, who I thought would be gobbled up by Ronald Falk relatively quickly, in fact has gained half a second on that time. So, so Ronald Falk is 3.2 seconds behind McBride here. Misha with my just 1.3 behind Ronald Falk. So Ronald Falk's pace appears to be... Uh... Oh, now another new tyre for Ronald Falk. That's, uh, that's four. That's why his pace went... So they really are changing tyres more regularly than they do they used to do in the Super Sticky qualifiers back in the 80s. So that's McBride's pressure off, Vidmeyer's pressure off. Max Mort looks like he's going to. Max Mort's got a problem, so he might be retiring. My fact, 45 second lap. So he lost about uh, 10 to 12 on that tyre stop and drop down to 7th, 6th, sorry. So Ongaro leads by a long way. One Carlos Canas is 2nd. 3rd is Battle. 4th is the man we're with, who is Karma Bride. Misha Vidmeyer is 5th. Robert's also battle is not getting any nearer to uh, Canas either. So Canas has kind of found a pace which is keeping him where he wants to be, which is very safely in second place. 
Battling third, McBride fourth. Vidmeyer fifth. In the race, kind of, one Carl's Canas has absolutely discovered his pace there. He is fastest lap of the race in the last. And oddly, both Canas and Battle have done their fastest laps of the race last lap. I'm not sure the conditions are got much better for them, but 29.6 for Canas and 29.89 for Battle. So we are now three quarters of the way through, 90 and 30. Our leader has taken us around uh, all those laps. Canas takes fuel beneath us. And it's fired up and gone. So when we come round timing and scoring in a second, we'll see what the gap is. McBride, kind of a no man's actually. McBride's actually not that far from battle. He could catch it. He's four and a half seconds behind battle now. He's gained about two in the last few laps. Going to really push the Australian with the Infinity. We'll see battle. Point of right, I think, unless he's taking no, he's taking fuel. So McBride, 4.5 seconds back from battle. Bidmeyer, 10 seconds behind uh, McBride now. And I think Ronald Falk's challenge, despite some very fast laps, is kind of waning now. He's just fed up and trying to overtake everybody. But he is in sixth, he's not like last, he's not got no points. Rongara, 93 laps down, one Carlos Canas, 91. We're at Battle, Carl McBride. So. As we come to the pits of Quagri, let's have a quick shifty if we can. Maybe he's looking for something I can see. So who's gone? We've lost one of the drivers. And it's uh, Stringer's flamed again. He's been having engine problems the whole time. So let's go and have a look at uh, our leader, who's just uh, about to take the big triple. And there's Ongaro landing it. And in the background, you'll see uh, the orange car of Battle as they come up the hill and go over the steps now. You'll see the orange car of uh, Robert Battle. So on Garo. Right? Flies it. And then you've got Battle behind him. So, Ankara carrying his merry way. He's dragging Battle. Is he going to drag Battle up, up towards anyone? I don't know, really. 29.3, 29.0. No, Canas still pulling away from Robert. McBride. Um, Battle has been rejoined in the everlasting Misha Vidmeyer. Uh, they're run about Battle. So let's find Misha Vidmeyer. Vidmeyer is the all green car about to take the big triple leap now on the berm now. So Vidmeyer is oh, and it's literally going to lose a place now because Ronald Falk just over jumped. So Ronald has there on the camera, as we saw, picked up again uh, Vidmeyer's place. So it's fifth. They were fighting for fourth and third before, but he picked up fifth. So uh, Ronald Falk moves up a position to fifth. Now, obviously, he's still got another 25 laps of his tyres to stay on, which hasn't been a massively uh, positive thing so far. Running in fifth. Ungaro leads. Canas second. Battle third. McBride fourth. Misha Vidmeyer in fifth. Actually, it's not. It's Ronnefalk in fifth now, isn't it? Ronnefalk fifth. Vidmeyer is sixth. And that accident just at the fresh part of the new lap. This is Vidmeyer now. But the S-Works. No, that's not true, Scotty. So, 
Ongaro just actually lost a couple of seconds, but he's only got, he has got a lap and three quarters. As the uh, lights get brighter in comparison to the, du the dulling sky. Oh, that's a more another mistake. He's a long way ahead of Ogden, though. Right, OK, let's uh, have, a see, have a look and let's see who we can pick up. Let's have a little look at our second place man. I'll try and find you on the track for him. So as you can hear in the background, it's 100 laps, 20 to go. So one car is Canass, he's just going over the line now, he's just been unlapped by Ronafout. So Canass is the second of those cars on the steps now. White wheels, white wing, blue and no funny cars, and massive tanks lapper. Back one, Zach, thank you. And you can see it getting a little bit darker out there, even on the cameras. So the fog lights are taking the edge off it, the drivers can see perfectly well. But Canass running second. Probably envis envisaged being slightly behind Ronafalk a long way into the race. We didn't realise that with Ronafalk's travails, he'd actually be slightly behind, but several, with a couple of laps ahead. So, you know, this is the unpredictability of uh, one of those nitro racing. Anything can happen. There's certainly going to be a lot of head scratching in the HB pit off this one because, you know, the pace has been there for David, but as the wheels been falling off. So this battle with Ronafalk and Juan Carlos Canas is not real because there's laps between them the advantage of the young Spaniard because we've had four tyre changes now for Ronafalk. I think they've changed one they changed as well. So they uh, work on the fronts more. Ronafalk takes some fuel. Canas carries on going. So Bade now getting closer just because the way the various uh, things flow. So we want to start now. So Canas the Spaniard looking pretty impressive. Question really is, is Carl McBride actually going to be able to challenge um, Robert Battier? Will Dave Runnefelt be able to stay ahead? Oh, Runnefelt's just had the fastest lap of the entire final, a 28.5, so Runnefelt's not slouching about now. I'm sure he's driving angry, because he must be angry with someone, probably himself, for this tyre situation. He is in fifth, but he's really got no chance. He could get fourth, but it's like a, a bit of luck. He's a long way McBride, behind McBride. McBride, though, is gaining uh, on... Robert Battier. As we carry on with Juan Carlos Canas in second place. Now, this is kind of like, let's um, see if we can find Aussie Kyle again, because Aussie Kyle is moving slightly towards, um, now the pits has come, Canas, and moving slightly towards. Interesting, as the light slightly changed, the, the virility of the colour has changed. You can't, it's not quite as easy to see which each car is. Obviously not on the track, it's not easy either. Okay, so the car now coming down the motorway, it's number 10 car. Uh, second car up the hill right now at the top. They're both, unfortunately, both are red and white cars, but it's uh, Hara in the eighth. So the second car going around the off-camera corner, that is, and he's entering through. That is the car of Carl McBride. Now McBride wasn't massively behind uh, Battle. These five and a half seconds, the Australians going to make up, and many of that you kind of think is going to take an error. So McBride comes down the main straight, carries as much speed as possible, he goes over the uh, master's jump and then up to the top of the circuit through the roller, over the infinity leap, turn sharp left, and then into the very difficult off camber hairpiece. He'll turn round back in front of him, back under the rostrum, over the Coca-Cola jump, over the motor wheel jump, and turning with a big drive onto the triple and round the berm and up over start finish. And that's, oh, and he just lost momentum there as he climbed back up to the steps in the dangerous doubles. And that's the main straight, and that's the lap of the Circular Verde track with Carmen Bright and Infinity Team. And thank you to Infinity. Thank you to HP Racing Performer. Thank you to BeachRC.com. Thank you for to Scuderia, 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 Scampi Rosso, S Works, JQ Racing, and of course our other sponsors, Hot Race, Savok Servos, and Reds Engines for being us here at the moment. You're watching Carmen Bright running in fourth place. And he's dropping away from Rob Batai. 
And Garo still leaves with 11 laps to go. Runafout is going to have to try and make up seven seconds, which he might do at this rate, but I think he's got an extra stop. 54 minutes, and I think some of them on their last stop may have one more. Runafout is the most likely to overtake McBride, only because McBride is only seven seconds ahead. So, moving now, Misha Vidmeyer is in sixth. So, Carlos Canas has got a 12.2 second lead over Robert Battle. Robert Battle is 5.3 seconds ahead of Carl McBride. And Carl McBride is six seconds ahead of Ronald who just put in another fastest lap of the entire race and gained a second on McBride. Now, he's got uh, 10 laps to do it, but I think he's got a fuel stop as well. So, I'm not sure he's going to do it because of that situation but let's uh let's go and find the in many ways the star of the show but for the wrong reasons it's uh Ronafout Ronafout flies the triple now over the berm let's see uh David flying up over the finished lap that time round he gained just three tenths over McBride so the lap the gap is 6.5 seconds Ongaro by the way is still giving his master class which unfortunately means you don't get much time on uh on the picture Ongaro has made his final stop so he is Happily away. Canas second. A lap and two thirds behind. He's two laps behind now. A lap down. It's just a lap down, in fact, they go over. Right, so, Ronald Falk has just got past, oh, just had got past McBride on the pit stop. So McBride now is just ahead of Ronald Falk as the light really is going. And they do need these floodlights, so Ronafout now needs to catch up McBride, but does Ronafout have enough fuel to get to the end, or is he going to need to splash? Is this, a, is this a straight fight for fourth place? Being Carl McBride and David Ronafout. Ronafout just, uh, McBride just took fuel. If Ronafout needs fuel, there's no chance with, it, with just seven laps remaining. And if he needs to take fuel, he may as well take it now, because there's no point breaking your rhythm. He's trying to get close. So it's run about being at Bride, it's the battle on the track, and it's a battle of fourth and fifth. Which wouldn't mean much. It wasn't for the tumultuous time that Ron has been having in this race. Ongara, I remind you, is winning. Kanas is second. Battle is third. And this is McBride in fourth. McBride's lost fourth there. Mistake on Bride. So Ron now picks up fourth place. But does he need fuel? Is the next unanswered. We need new tyres, the other question, because he hasn't, he hasn't managed to do trade laps without changing tyres before. Ongaro has a lead of exactly a lap, a lap in about uh, two seconds. As Ronafout has taken the, the place from uh, McBride. So Ronafalk now has a few laps to go, and it's interesting, even though our camera's been slightly adjusted, you can certainly tell that the uh, the light is going, it's a lovely dusk to it. Ongaro leading, five laps to go. Kness second, battle 18 seconds behind, six seconds, but uh, Ronafalk has a 1.9 second lead, but will he have to take fuel? Will this be uh, the end of his attempt to get fourth and fifth? There they go. So Ronafout very much looking. Oh, he's got Cole Ogden, his teammate, in front of him. There's, there's laps between Ogden and Ronafout, despite the problems that Ronafout's had. And we are now down to three laps to go, because whilst Ronafout has five laps to go, it won't count, because the three laps to go is what will happen with Ongaro. So we're down to three laps to go, 58 minutes, 36 seconds. So we are going to be somewhere in the region, I would think, Oh, but exactly an hour for 120 laps, which is very convenient, isn't it? On Pritt, the other uh, RCGP long races won't divide as easily. So, Ronafout steer into four. So, Ronafout now is four seconds behind um, Battle, but he only has two laps to go. He's got two laps to go, because Battle is going around. Ronafout almost looking for third, which is quite remarkable performance, but it's going to have to to get there. So now they start the last lap. 
Oh! Ongaro, please get our leader now. He's hopping up the end. He's up the top. Ongaro, orange and orange tail. He's now hopping over the infinity leap. That is David Ongaro. Back one car. Back one car. And that is Ongaro, who's just got a few corners to go. He flies over the double double. He's going to take the infinity leap, and he's going to take the red. And Ongaro is going to take, and he wins the second RCGP round. A great result for Ongaro. David Ongaro, fantastic performance. Well, congratulations to Davide. Another win under his belt. And he's joined by two podium newcomers, Juan Carlos Canas in second and Robert Battier in third. That was, again, pretty easy, really, wasn't it? Once, once David hit problems, you were able to uh, just stroke it away and win by a lap. Yeah, I saw David had a problem, but also Juan Carlos was really fast. So I just drive like to 29 like zero from uh, zero to five uh, and just take him and don't make, don't make mistakes but so let's look at how the drivers stack up overall no surprises davide's on top but despite his nightmare final david ronafalk is not a million miles behind with 31 points and snapping at his heels, Juan Carlos Canas on 28 and fellow Spaniard Robert Battier just one point behind with 27. And for the overall standings, it's Team Scampi Rosso with 66, HB Racing with 54, followed by S-Works with 42 points. There's six rounds to go, so keep it locked to RCGP as the rest of the season unfolds.